You know something, I thought that I was not going to respond to this because for the most part I've been unbothered with the attacks of uh, Mr. Fantastic A24 who is from the Manosphere, but today I'm feeling a little low bright, vibrational and in a bad mood, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, you're like ugly and disgusting on every level. It's not even just how you look. Um, you told people that I was, quote, trying to throw the pussy at you. That's a really bold thing to say for a guy who's like never had my phone number. Of the men who've had my phone number on YouTube, who I've not wanted to sleep with or anything. I mean, from Uncle Shook to whoever, like, bro, like, not even my number. Not even. You know what you look like to me? You look like a lynch victim after the lynching like straight up strange fruit and I'm not even exaggerating like exactly the way Billie Holiday extra uh described them with a bulging eyes and twisted mouth like you look like some of these sea creatures people are pulling out of the water and they're just like what is that and that's in my heart of hearts like even before clowning even before being upset it's just that I'm such a tender and gentle person I wouldn't normally say these things unless provoked and since you told people I'm quote trying to throw the pussy at you I think that's provocation enough because um <clears throat> I'm actually a woman who's practiced a, a lot of chastity and abstinence in her life and I don't know what it is with nakers and how they want to talk about African-American women's bodies and what we do with them, but there are those of us who are virtuous. There are those of us who don't know what the hell it means or what it even is to cheat on a man or whatever it is, and I'm, I'm one of those women. So uh, with that being said, I stroked your fragile ego at a time years ago where I had been blacklisted and blackballed by most of black YouTube, and you weren't the only one. I did this with O'Shea Du Jackson. I did this with, I mean, O'Shea showed the emails where I was like, hey, big head, like, do you think a woman would normally say, hey, big head to him or hey, big something else? Like, I needed to have my voice heard. And I only meant to have my, my voice heard, but apparently I got into your head. And that was never the intention. So whatever conversations you had at length about me with China White and, and Jessica X, and let me say this, if China White left you on her porch and shut her door in your face, if China White did that, what on earth do you think I would do with you? I mean, even Jason Black at least had a fake Google number from me directly from he that he could show but you had none of this and yet somehow and with Jason Black I just wanted to be on his show too <clears throat> and because whatever he he saw me at a time where he didn't know anything about uh black YouTube blacklisting me he was just like oh yeah I want to collab and I'm sure you know the good old boys got to him and that didn't go anywhere but the point is there are YouTubers and, and ex Jason Black and O'Shea out of this, like literal six figure YouTubers who have been in my DMs. Dr. Umar Johnson knows how to contact me. I mean, of all things, uh, of all men, of all things, Dieterell can reach me. And I'm just like, you, you. And this goes to show because this Asian girl on TikTok was talking about this the other day and even Billie Eilish said something like never be nice to an ugly guy because he'll treat you like you're the ugly one, right? And you've obviously made this true, right? You're the proof that she was being honest. It's just a group that you fall into, so you act like it. Um, but no, Mr. Uh, not so fantastic. I have never tried to throw my vagina at you. I was desperate to have my voice heard. I was suffering through a vicious smear and slander campaign and I was voiceless. I didn't have the numbers. I didn't have a stable channel. I didn't have anything. So I'm just like, oh, let me go to other channels where people actually listen, where this, well, this crowd of people actually listen and get my voice out there. So it was nothing to say, hey, can I sit on your face? And really, because your face is only worth my shit. That's the real gag behind asking to sit on your face. You're like a bad person inside and out. You know, sometimes God makes people ugly 
to protect us from them because if we're repulsed by how they look and like you literally turn my stomach right like there's literally something about your face your pimples your features that like makes me sick like you're hard to look at like when people talk about what's easy and hard in the eyes you're it's it's hard it's brick hard on the eyes to even look at you all the white space under your eyes all the way your mouth reaches to the corners of your face it's hard to look at you it's upsetting to look at you you look like a dead man walking i mean green mile 824 john coffee 824 like you have no idea here's the deal you were abandoned by your father and you said something about your mom being a bad mom well, your mom had an ugly kid. And here's the deal about that. When a woman has a butt-ass ugly child, she's more susceptible to postpartum depression. She's more susceptible to that being an elongated period of time. She doesn't pick up her child as much. And here's the deal. You can go to psychology to get today. You can go to w, um, WebMD. You can go to um, the American Psychology Association. Like This is just what happens. Like Your mom didn't even want to touch you. And so you want to talk about me and my private parts. I don't know you. You've never had my phone number. I flirted with you in a chat and over an email. That's it. And even, you know, when I was like, like trying to send you like some cheap ass cash app, understand when I'm interested in a man, I don't give him money. I mean, Mr. Uppity can get a gift from me, but like, because it cheapens a woman to a guy. So obviously this was manipulation. And I'm not afraid to say that because I was desperate to uh, clear my reputation. And of course, you know, you're shit people, so it didn't work because you're just a bunch of low lives. And I learned not to care or not to involve myself, but real deal, like you're actually real life ugly. Like there are a lot of people I see get treated as and called ugly. And I look at that person, I'm like, that's just an average looking person. I don't know why anybody is being so mean to that person, but you're literally like repulsive and hard to look at. I mean, if, if I was, if I died tomorrow and I had to stand in front of God and, and say whether or not, is this an objectively ugly person or not? I'd, I'd have to tell the truth and be like, yeah, he is. And there's like nothing you could do about it. Like you can't even plastic surgery yourself out of the way that your eyes are set, how they're so far apart, how they're so awkwardly shaped, like, like your forehead, like you and some dark skin people, <clears throat> they've got beautiful dark skin, like Naomi Campbell, beautiful dark skin. Um, What is this? Uh, My best friend who's from Somalia, coffee black, silky, beautiful dark skin. You know, Tyson Beckford, beautiful dark skin. Um, Gabrielle Union, uh, I can go on and on. But your texture is so nasty. The texture of your skin is so nasty that it fades your skin to the point where you're almost crackhead colored. Like you look bad. I I couldn't sleep with you. I couldn't sleep with you if you were wealthy. And that's just the truth. And as much as you guys have that story about me blowing $10,000 on, you know, some pookie, you guys also know that I abandoned a white pig farmer because he smelled like the pig. You see, I'm used to dating men who are six figures and above. I'm used to being fancied by them. I'm used to being pursued by them. But you wanted to take my emails and expose them to a bunch of jobless, deadbeat fathers because you are not used to attractive women giving you the time of day. And that's part of the reason you're so hateful. Like, you're just a bad, like, you've got a bad heart. You've got bad intentions. You've got bad energy. Like, you're just overall through and through a bad person. Here's the deal. I said what I said about your daughters and their two different skin colors. Now, when you were gaslighting your daughter about her dark skin, when she came to you as her father and said, people are treating me differently because my hair is like this and my color is like this, and you blamed it on her attitude. As a fellow African-American girl, I was incensed on her behalf and I spoke up about that because your gaslighting her is abuse and God only knows what else you, you fail to do for her. But when she's an adult, you will remember my voice because what I was telling her is that you are failing her as a father by being a colorist. Now, if she has your features, I don't know what to say. 
for her sake and her mom's sake, I hope that she looks like her mom because Cluster B said that her mom was a good looking woman. And if she has her mother's features and just your skin, she's going to make it. She'll be fine. But good God, if she has your features. I, I, I mean, <laughs> GoFundMe, cosmetic surgery, something. Because if I was her, I would want to straight up go Michael Jackson and dig the Joe Jackson out of my face because you're hard to look at. And I don't know what a little girl would do if she had to wake up in the morning and see you in the mirror. And not just because you're ugly on the outside, because you are actually ugly on the inside. You're so ugly, I felt sorry for you. You're so ugly, I took pity on you. When they voted you the ugliest man in the manosphere, I felt secondhand embarrassment, especially because you had already allowed me to come on your platform. Now, here's this. There was a time where I said that you were not married. And Lisa Anderson and all these different people came after me for saying that. And you made me climb my black self back onto your panel and apologize. And I was just like, well, I thought Mr. Fantastic said that. And if he didn't say that, my bad, I'm sorry. But I mean, you said that to me, right? You didn't say that to a crowd. You said that crap to me. So... When Rudim doxes you or, or whoever, whoever did what to you and they found out that you were indeed divorced, why would you tell me these things? Why would you send me your location? Like, tell the truth. You had a crush on me and you folded under the pressure of people who tried to tell you not to like me. And on my end, I was being slandered and I was desperate to get my receipts out to people who would listen. Because I didn't want to be known as some stalker, some girl who had talked to a guy for three days and like whatever else. I'm like, dude, I don't have to stalk you. Like, <laughs> you've seen me. Like, I've cammed up. Like, y'all know what I look like. Y'all know what to do. I don't need no Photoshop and I don't need no body crop and sexy and I do stay popping like Danny D. Kane show stopping. Like, I don't need any of that. And I would never need or even want a man like you. Speaking of looking like a lunch victim, you'd be better off dead. Like at least your daughter could create and fantasize in her mind about what her dad might be like. And that might give her some self-esteem. But to know that you have this ugly dad with this ugly heart and this ugly mind and this ugly soul that's going to give her low self-esteem. I'm sorry your mom was despondent, but at the end of the day, you're a throwaway character. And no one has to care about you. No one has to be nice to you. 15 years in the service and you're still the same petty officer you've always been okay so tell me you have no talent without telling me you have no talent tell me you have no ambition without telling me you have no ambition tell me you have no pride without telling me you have no pride You're like one of the worst people I've ever encountered in my life. And I think that some of this backlash I have gotten is a spiritual consequence for even dealing with people like you, for even dealing with people like O'Shea, for even dealing with people like other people who I won't name, because I can tell you one thing. When you're somebody like, and I don't want to say this guy's name, but six-figure YouTuber who's, you know, got a revolving door of beautiful women who's, you know, obviously really hard in African-American women. Part of the reason he didn't go around with my DMs is because it's kind of a run-of-the-mill run thing for him to deal with beautiful women, but it's so awkward for you. It's so strange for you that you had to run around and try to slander me. So now you know. Now you know that my interaction with you was never about you. My interaction with, with you was always about Uppity Unicorn. It wasn't even really about me. I just wanted my YouTube channel to float. And I needed somebody to hear me and to understand that I didn't have the character that I was being maligned with. I used your platform for that. I used O'Shea's platform for that. Um, I attempted to use other men's platform for that. Um, before I started camming up, I, I went to a number of people and I learned very quickly. I mean, I had even posted up like the art of seduction, like ha ha ha, like this is what's going on. I've never had a sincere feeling about you in my life. Well, two, I felt sincerely sorry for you when you were voted the ugliest man in the manosphere because I had to hurt. And then also, 
I remember saying something to you over an email um, because colorism really does bother me. And I was just like, we don't have to be your preference, but we should be able to be your sister. You shouldn't, uh, wanting to bed us shouldn't be a requirement for community. Because in reality, if you're only going to have one wife, then every other black woman, you're not bedding. And that black people should be able to do that. But of course, I'm a recovering pro-black, right? I'm a recovering pan-Africanist. There's lots of black unity things that I've had to get out of my head because of nakers like you. But um, aside from that, you, you've always been trash. You, you've always been trash. And you look like the trash that you are. And as far as, because I understand that the man that you were talking to, and I'm not going to say his name because I don't say his name or any of his people's name um, on my channel anymore. And I haven't for months and I'm not going to for as long as Uppity Unicorn exists. But I understand that you are trying to make him jealous by saying, my name and you know whatever transpired between him and I when I was single you were like yeah you know like you tried to make him look you tried to make him feel like you knocked his chick right and here's the deal even though I, I can acknowledge that guy as a true to life Pookie and Ray Ray he's still better than you he, he's still better than you. And behind closed doors, he's actually very kind and very affectionate and very thoughtful. Like, I get the whole social media thing, but that person is actually very multifaceted. Uh, you'd be surprised. Um, and here's the deal. For the most part, you two are co-equals, but if any woman, if any woman, and I do mean any woman, had to pick in real life between you and that guy, they would choose that guy. And this is with no allegiance to him. This is with all the vitriol, with all the disagreement, with all the things that have passed and transpired, with no semblance of any kind of care or concern for this guy everybody would pick every woman would pick the, including your ex-wife would pick this guy over you like you're a bad person you're hard to be around and on top of that you're hard to look at sometimes it's like okay well if you pick a struggle like if you are handsome but an asshole or ugly but a sweetheart then you give women something to work with but you have given women nothing to work with and this is why you're an incel, and this is why you're a part of the manosphere, and this is why you have the channel and the content that you have. You shouldn't be talking up under my clothes. You shouldn't be talking between my legs. What I said was a criticism that you put out there, a criticism of a thing that you put out there about your mother and about your daughters. And I responded to what you made public, but you wanted to hit below the belt and respond to something that was private. And now that you have, I can honestly say, Your 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 self esteem is so low that it was really easy to just flirt with you, climb myself up on your channel, speak my piece, and you defended me. Because here's the deal: this might be manipulative, but you knew that I was right, and you knew that I was telling the truth. And so many people with that debacle understood that I was telling the truth. But a lot of those people who understood that I was telling the truth about what was going on at the time or either in cahoots with the people that I was at odds with, or they were men who knew that they could never get with me and women who knew that they could never compete with me. That's always the case. It's been that way my whole life. It's why I've been, you know, isolated to some degree. It's why I'm a unicorn. I understand that in spite of what anybody says, and I'm rare and desirable. And you get black sheep treatment as a result when you're slicker than the average. I know who I am. You don't know who I am, and you don't know who you are. That's your real problem. That's why you're really mad. That's why you're really upset, and that's why you spew all this angry content. I mean, I don't know what you do now, but that's what you used to do regularly. 
I stay away from those spaces. And that's another way you can obviously tell, like, look, I said my piece and I boned out. I said my piece and I bounced out. There was no sticking around. There was no camaraderie because it, it was never, ever going to be that way. I don't know what kind of women you've been around, what your mother taught you, what your aunts, what the people, but no, 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 no. My private parts were never on the table. Not for you. Ever. Ever. Like, you... I'm a hypochondriac. I, I, I can't. I'm so afraid of STDs and all kind of stuff. Like, it would be easier for me to have some kind of a, you know, cam up internet like relationship thingy or something but to be with a person in real life you have to be so much because I'm afraid of everything I mean you guys have listened to me be a hypochondriac on live you guys have listened to me diagnose myself with all kinds of disorders and things like that only to go to a doctor and be like yo you're not a borderline you don't have autism you don't have this or this girl you need to sit down you have PTSD go home but I'm so afraid you get <sighs> my mask, my sterile gloves. Like I've been rocking that way since before COVID. Maybe I didn't have any masks, but I had those gloves. Like I wouldn't want to touch you. You look like a pimple like that is just going to pop and burst onto it's like the surrounding items. Like I, I can't. I, I wouldn't be able to do it. It's like your mom conceived and gave birth to an STD. I couldn't do it. Maybe a lesser woman could. Maybe that's why you have lesser women around you who are who manage to stick around. But there are people who I've had so much more longevity with on YouTube, especially men that I've had so much more longevity with on YouTube. There's a reason it doesn't go down like this between Dieterell and I. And I know some of you want him to be Mr. Uppity, but he's not. But there's a reason why that longevity is there. There's a reason why that Ebo Sosa longevity is there. There's a reason why that Nkrumah Ture or Terry longevity is there. Or that Darren Marion longevity is there. Like, these are such better men than what you will ever be. They're kinder people. They're more decent. They're more productive. They're more intelligent. They have more morality and character. Like you just fail on every level. So to even assume that you had access to me, yeah, that's offensive. That That's offensive. And here's the deal. The other guy that you guys like to make fun of is surrounded by a lot of quality women And sure, he's also surrounded by a lot of low quality women, but there are women who are around him who had, who, if you don't know him, you would think that he was a good guy. And if you didn't know him, like I didn't know him and like, I still don't know him, you would think something of him that doesn't really exist because of all the decent women who are around him. Whereas you don't have one, you don't have one good kind, sweet woman around you. You you don't you don't have one and you can't. You necessarily have to have women who are who are always in drama and always in the wrong and always backbiting and always slandering and, and tell mongering like you like the lowest of the low. And I don't know how you guys are deluded or if you guys are only pretending to be this delusional. Maybe you're pretending to be this delusional because you actually know who you are. You actually know that you're worthless. You actually know that you're unattractive. You actually know that you're never going to make a mark in the world. You actually know that you will live and die and that your living and your dying will be inconsequential. And maybe you just hide it behind big words because you're so fragile and so ashamed. But any man who sits around and, and wants to talk about black women like that all day, like we know what you are. You failed. It, it, success was out of your reach. Look, 
and getting to know certain women on YouTube, and I get it, you know, people see huge breasts and they automatically think, you know, whores and Jessica Rabbit, whatever else. I get that. But the reality is this, for most of my life, I've been abstinent and I take that very seriously. I used to be a very religious person. When I was a Christian, I was a Bible study leader. And when I was a practicing Muslim, I was like a sheikha in training. That's like a religious leader in training. So I really practiced, like, like my only child was conceived in wedlock, God rest his soul. Like, I didn't play those kinds of games. And part of the reason you can't even fathom a black woman who was chased is because you were raised by whores and you were raised by, by indecent people. That's what you're around. So, of course, when I get up and I say who I am, you're not going to believe me because you can't even imagine it because your upbringing was that low. It was that low. But I was raised by traditional women of the Church of God in Christ. And so many of my friends and aunties were married as virgins. And you can't believe it because your life is cheap. You can't believe it because you don't know women on that moral or spiritual level. You don't know women who roll out of bed at 3 a.m. and get on their knees and pray. You only know women who roll out of bed at 3 a.m. and get on their knees and perform fellatio for money. You don't know decent people. They're out of reach for you. I literally came, did my business, left. It wasn't worth it then. It's not worth it now. But for the people who are caught in the crossfire, don't... Don't make me laugh, one. And also, don't threaten me with a good time. Because you know, like, I know that I don't play these games at all. At all. Like, I can sit and I can be quiet and I can do my thing because that's how I like to do it. I'm, I'm coming into my own as far as maturity and beefs go on YouTube. And I've learned to just walk away from people. Without explanation, without a phone call, without a this or that, just, just bye. But y'all are fully aware of what I'm capable of. And if you're not, it's to your own detriment. I shouldn't even be a topic. I literally, I was living in Washington State when this happened. I've been in the Midwest for I don't know how long and this stuff is still coming up. I shouldn't be a topic of conversation, let alone a topic of conversation where I'm being slandered. But that's the type of people you are. You will never stop. You will always be a group of people who speak of that which you have no knowledge of. You don't have journalistic integrity. You didn't take journalism like I did. You didn't learn the moral code of journalists like I did when I was at my university because you never went to one, right? You're ignorant. You're low class. You have a low status. You have a, like, you just weren't exposed to better things. And as a man of 38, as a man who is, or I think you're 38, either way, you're damn near 40, like, like you have fossilized. You're never going to change. You're going to die who you are today. Now, there was a woman on a woman on YouTube who told me, oh, you still have growing and learning to do. And I was just like, do you think that you're clowning me? I love the fact that I'm still teachable and moldable. However, you, sister, are not. You're going to live and die the mess that you are. And I get to comfort myself the fact, with the fact that I can learn and grow and change. Because I'm not fossilized yet. I'm not where you are. So... You take all of this and you do what you want to with it. But what anybody under the sound of my voice knows for sure is that I would literally not only never sleep with you, but I wouldn't even touch you. If you were at the cash register of any place, if you were at the Whole Foods and I'm checking out, I wouldn't let you put my money, my change in my hand. If you tried to give me a receipt, I'd say, no, thank you. No receipt. I don't need one. Like I'm a real life hypochondriac. 
<laughs> if nothing else, if, 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 if I don't want to blame it on being, you know, uppity or, you know, snooty, I can at least blame it on the fact that I think so much is just gross and you are gross. Oh my God. Look, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up because it doesn't deserve any more time than this. But honestly, like, live or die, you're inconsequential to me. This is an address that I made towards you for the people who are caught in between. I have standards. I have requirements. I have these different things that oftentimes get me called the name of my channel, which is an uppity unicorn. It's not for it's not for no reason. And part of the reason I stay uppity is because when I mix with you, when I mix with you, low lives, commoners, whatever you want to call it, this is what happens. So it's better. It's almost better and more preferable to be a bit of an elitist and to only deal with other African-Americans who have an education, to only ever deal with African-Americans who have bachelor's degrees, master's and PhDs, who live at a certain socioeconomic status. Because every time I deal with you, these are the kind of things that happen. This is the nature of the beast. And it's, I mean, it's very troubling, but for you, it's normal. I mean, what's shit to a fly? Me, maybe, I don't want to step in it, but you, I mean, that's, that's where you're happy landing. It's what you're attracted to. So shoe fly, don't bother me.